Well, good morning, YouTube. All right, guys, in today's video, we're gonna try and experiment here. As you guys well know, I am into off-grid solar systems and lithium battery systems and so on and so forth. We've got a whole series on building the off-grid system for Goliath. Well, our trailer has always been somewhat independent. And uh, what I wanna do is make it part of the system or give it its own system. But I had a couple concerns. I have seen in some cases where other YouTubers are trying to test batteries and inverters and having trouble with things like lifts and air compressors and so on and so forth running off of these systems. Well, the trailer, if you see right here behind me, has got this aluminum box on the front. And in that box, there are two AGM Marine Deep Cycle batteries basically in there. And those batteries power the 12 volt lights that are inside, also power the radio, the hydraulic pump for the automotive lift that is inside, and it also powers the winch that opens and closes the tailgate. Anyway, so Power Queen reached out to me and they offered this battery that's right here in this box. So I've cut the tape, but I've not taken anything out of the package. So let's take a look and see how it came. You know, just my luck. Now the wind is gonna pick up. So you see right on top, there is like a packet of paperwork. You can also see here are the terminal bolts and the protective covers. And then there is the Power Queen battery. So as you can see, this is a 12.8 volt, 200 amp hour with low temperature protection. Now that comes out to 2,560 watt hours. And in a few moments, we're gonna get the readings off of the old batteries that I'm about to take out. We'll do a comparison, not only in how much usable power we've got, but also we're gonna weigh them and see what the difference in weight is. Okay guys, so like I said, it's a 12.8 volt battery. Now the charging voltage should be about 14.4. The recommended charge current is 40 amps at a 0.2C rate. The continuous discharge current is 200 amps. And that's why I think this will work fine in our application. I've got two circuit breakers, one for the lift and one for the tailgate. And one of them is a 60 amp breaker, the other is an 80 amp breaker. So if this can handle 200, there shouldn't be an issue running those loads. Is this here the max thrust power for a trolling motor is 70 pounds. Now we're not reusing it in a trolling situation, but it's that trolling function that made me want to give this one a try. All right, and both of the battery terminals are an M8 by 1.25, which is pretty standard for most lithium batteries nowadays. The battery stands eight and a half inches tall, 8.2 inches wide and 21 inches in length. So it's a very compact size giving the fact that it's got the capacity probably well over the two batteries that I have in there currently. So it will take up less space, weigh less, and have more storage capacity. All right guys, so in that envelope, we had a quick start guide, the full manual, and they even threw in a bunch of stickers. All right, so I've taken a moment to look through the manual. And what is really nice about this battery is you can use multiple batteries in the system. Now here, we're only using the one for now at least but you can run up to eight batteries in a system. So you can run four of them in series for 48 volts. You can run four of them in parallel to remain 12 volt, but get 800 amp hours. But you can even run them in a series parallel connection of various sizes up to a 24 volt, 800 amp hour, or was it 400 amp hour? Either way, there's a lot of options here with it. Now, like I said, it has low temperature protection. Now what that does is it disconnects the battery if it's trying to charge below 32 degrees Fahrenheit because we all know that we can damage lithium battery cells under, the, under those conditions. Now the batteries can be used down to negative four. They just can't be charged below 32. So that's where that comes in. 
It's not like the other batteries where there was actually a heater built into them. If it detects the low temperature, it's just gonna disconnect to protect the battery. It's not gonna energize a heater system. Now I'm gonna go grab my multimeter and I am going to check the nominal battery voltage on here at rest before we hook anything up to it because I wanna see how charged it is at the moment. I don't have any charging capabilities for this at the moment. I wanna make sure it's gonna fit in our compartment and that it's gonna run the loads that we need it to run. And if that's the case, then we'll get the charger, solar charge controller, maybe some solar panels, we'll move further. But I wanna make sure this is gonna run the loads before we do that. Okay, with our multimeter set to DC voltage, we will just make the connection here at the terminals. And it looks like we have 13.16 volts. And according to the manual, that says that we are approximately 50% charged at the low end of 50%, according to my understanding. All right, so now the next step is going to be to remove these lead acid AGM batteries out of the compartment. We'll see if we can make this fit, make our connections, and then we can test and see if everything works. Now, before we disconnect and remove, I'm gonna show you the current configuration. I will warn you, it's a little bit of a mess in here. It's always bothered me and I can't wait to get this cleaned up with the new system. So here are the two batteries. They are DECA Marine Master Deep Cycle Starting Batteries. And because there are two of them, obviously they are wired in parallel, still remaining the same voltage, but doubling the amp hour capacity. I don't know the exact specs on these until we get them out. But you see, there's plenty of room in here. I can build quite a good battery bank. Now I do store some other things in here as well that I've taken out to get to these. Let's get these unhooked. You know, and as I look in here, I almost forgot, we got a hydraulic tongue jack in here as well. So there are three big loads that it will need to operate. However, we never operate them simultaneously. It's always one at a time. Obviously this was only for hooking and unhooking the trailer or leveling the trailer. We're gonna open the tailgate way before we ever need to lower or raise the lift inside. So as long as it can handle the maximum one, we should be fine. And I think the biggest load is either gonna be the hydraulic tongue jack or it's gonna be the lift. I don't think the winch is gonna be the big one. And these are the breakers I spoke of. I said 60 and 80, but this one is the 80 and it's going to the hydraulic systems. That one is a 50 amp, and that is the one I believe going to the tailgate winch. Remember guys, whenever dealing with batteries, always disconnect your negative terminal first. You see my positives are still attached. When reconnecting, you always reattach your positives first and your negatives last. Safety. All right guys, so what we have here is the DECA Marine Master Deep Cycle Batteries. Now these have capabilities of starting as well. They're designed for marine and RV applications. They weigh about 51 pounds each and they are a group 27 battery. Now, based on what I could find online because it doesn't say on the batteries itself, so it looks like the reserve capacity for each battery is 175 amp hours. So the two of these together should be 350 amp hours. Now keep in mind, because it's lead acid, you can only discharge to a 50% state of charge. So you actually only get the rated capacity of one battery at 175 amp hours. Now I know that gets a little bit confusing when you're going from the lead acid to the lithium iron phosphate technology. So basically this battery is actually a little bit smaller than the two of these combined. It's lighter. So these are 51 pounds each. That makes them 102 pounds total. And the Power Queen weighs in at 43.54 pounds. So we're literally cutting our weight down less than half, almost one third, not quite, but right in between one third and a half and more storage capacity. All right, guys, and another advantage, if you look in here, there is corrosion and crust and everything from those lead acid batteries. That is also something we're going to eliminate. You know, that's just a byproduct of the lead acid. You don't see that with lithium iron phosphate batteries. So once we get those battery boxes out of there and find a good way to secure this battery in there, we should never have any of that gunk in there anymore. All right, well, I got the battery boxes out of there and that was way more of a challenge than I expected because of the corrosion that was on those bolts it was an absolute nightmare getting those eight little teeny tiny screws out of there. I probably spent the better part of an hour removing those, but it's done, it's clean. Now we're gonna test fit the new battery, see how it fits. 
All right, well, I'm gonna do some rearranging because I want the battery to fit going this way up against this back wall and it doesn't quite work. Now I can place it like that if I wanted to, but I kind of don't like the way it's got the area here, the area there. I'd rather have it up against this back wall. It leaves me more of this front area for other storage items. Now, because this wall right here comes in at an angle, I can't get it to slide back into place and get past this post all at the same time. But if I do it from up top, I can get it to drop in, but then it hits the switch and gets caught up under here. So I'm gonna reroute some of these wires down here and I'm gonna temporarily remove the switch and then I should be able to drop it down in from the top and get it to sit securely down in there. All right, and as you can see with things rearranged, it fits. Now, I may flip it the other way so the battery terminal connections are closer to here where the wires are coming through. I don't know, haven't made up my mind on that yet. You know, and there is a head of a bolt sticking up down there that holds that floor down to the trailer frame. So right now it's kind of rocking on the head of that bolt. So I think what I'm gonna do is take the base that it came in and I'm gonna trim it smaller to fit in there. That'll give me like an inch worth of cushion to help make it sit a little bit nicer. All right, well, I think that works pretty well. It actually keeps it from wanting to slide around in there. Now I just gotta find a way to secure it with a strap and I think we'll be good to go. You know, but before we worry about that, let's get these connections put back on and let's test our equipment. Let's make sure that all of the loads that we want to run will adequately run on this battery. All right, as you can see, all the connections are made. I came in here and I checked my 12 volt lights and sure enough, they are coming on, which I wasn't worried about those. So now let's go check a load, a big load. We'll start with the tailgate. All right, I can do that over. I had it up showing you that it worked and realized I wasn't recording. So here we go. All right, I don't actually need it up right now. So I'm gonna lower it back down and then we will check the tongue hydraulics and see if they work. All right guys, so this trailer is heavy and it does have a hydraulic foot. And I will tell this you, this trailer is so heavy on tongue weight that, uh, you know, I borrowed a friend of mine's dually to move it in a parking lot last year in Sturgis. And it was a, a brand new uh, Dodge 3500 top of the line dually. It squatted the back of the truck so bad that the front tires were locking up every time I even touched the brakes because there was no weight on the front axle anymore. Way more weight than that truck should have ever handled tongue weight wise. Of course, it doesn't bother Goliath, but this thing is heavy. So this will be a good test. I did it again. I thought I was recording and I did it. My finger isn't, you know, I bet you guys my fingers are dirty. It's not registering when I hit the button. So I thought I was recording. I just did a demonstration. Don't worry, we're gonna do it again. Okay, now I've verified that I'm recording. We've got the switch on and there we go. It's running the hydraulic pump. It's lifting it up. Lower it back down. And we'll go back up again. And well, I would demonstrate the lift, but I forgot I've got all this stuff in here. So I can't, so we'll have to do that at another time. Power Queen first reached out to me and offered this battery to me. I was a little skeptical on whether it would work in this application because I know that these are high amp loads. In, in my mind, I was thinking that it had a 100 amp hour BMS, but as it turns out, this is a 200 amp hour BMS in this battery and it's working flawlessly. So now that I know it's all working, I know it all fits and you can see how much more it cleaned up that whole area in there. Um, I think we're gonna look into uh, the next step. So now the decision really is, do I tie this system into that system and try to get it where it charges or do I go fully independent system where they would work even if they weren't plugged into one another? And I think that's the route I'm more likely to go. So I plan on putting new solar panels on Goliath in the very near future. So maybe I'll take these ones that are on Goliath. They're not as powerful, but this is a much smaller system. 
I'll move them to the trailer, put a charge controller on it, and maybe an all-in-one inverter. And this would be a really simple off-grid system. And then I'll put the new solar panels on Goliath and uh, up the juice on that one, so to speak. Well, guys, those are decisions I've got to make. And now you know where we stand. But uh, all in all, I'm really happy this worked. And I'm looking forward to the next step in making it happen. So, guys, I hope you like this video. Thank you for uh, watching it. And until the next time I see you, keep those engines running.